back to that Paradox Computing's Introduction to Computercraft for the Complete Beginner. So today we're going to take a look at disk drives. Now in the last episode I kind of said why disk drives are redundant when you've got paste bin, but people have pointed out to me there are some things you can do, so okay, let's have a look at disks. This will just be a quick episode really, there's not a lot that really needs to be shown. Um, so if, okay, Get yourself a computer and a disk drive and a disk. Put the disk inside the disk drive, all pretty self-explanatory. Now there's no need to wrap peripherals with the disk drives, they just, they just go, so that's easy. Now, if you wanna start seeing what's on a disk, you can change your directory by typing CD, change directory, um, and then type disk. Bam, and as you can see here, we're now in the disk directory. You can type ls like you usually would to see um, a, you know, files in that directory. There's a file called startup, so let's edit, startup. So it knows that um, we're editing the file in this directory when we type that. Cool, so what this is gonna, this program's gonna do is simply print booting from disk. Easy, exit, um, so let's run startup. And it prints booting from disk. Easy. To get back to the root directory, it's just cd space dot dot. And we're back here. Now, if you want to edit um, a program on the disk, but you want to stay in the root directory for some reason, you just type edit and then disk backslash um, name of the file. So we'll edit startup. And you can see we're now editing that same file on the disk. Easy. Um, if we were to say edit um, test there, save, exit. We can also copy, um, so here's some new commands, copy, uh, test to uh, disk backslash test, bam, and now if we cd disk, um, type ls, we can see we've copied the test file onto the disk. Um, delete, uh, we'll delete test, and so it's going to delete the one on the disk because we're in the disk directory, should at least, and you can see now that's gone. Um, and what else? We can also move, move, test, to disk, backslash, uh, test, cd disk, ls, nice, and if we change back to um, the root directory, uh, we can see that the file has been moved. Nice. Okay, so there's another handy little thing. So if you saw, um, I'll change it back. Um, so the file that we've got on these, uh, we'll delete test just to prevent confusion. Okay, so we'll clear the screen. All right, ls. Okay, so you can, damn it. Okay, clear. <laughs> So, on the disk, we've got a file called startup. Okay, now, if you create a startup file, um, and you put it on a disk, the computer is going to boot from that startup file. So, the first thing it's going to do when the computer starts up is um, read the program on the disk and run it. If it's called startup, only startup. So, if you've got something else in there that's not called startup, the computer won't boot from it. Cool. So, let's... um. Reboot the computer and see what happens. Now, if you remember, um, uh, if you remember, we'll edit uh, startup on the disk. You can see it's going to print booting from disk, okay? So, when we reboot the computer, it should say uh, booting from disk. Ta-da! You can also do this on computers at startup. So, now we're editing a startup file on the computer itself. And if we type, um, let's just put in another print command, booting, uh, booting from com computer. Cool. And we'll take the disk out. And we'll reboot the computer. And you can see it's using the startup file on the computer. Very, very handy. So what do you reckon is going to happen if we put a disk in with a startup file and the computer has a startup file? Which one does it choose when the computer starts up? Let's find out. Booting from disk. So the disk drive takes priority over a locally stored startup file. So I hope that makes sense. So 
Um, if a computer is ever in a bad state and it's you got maybe a file that you can't terminate or something, which has happened to me occasionally, you can always whack down a disk drive next to it and um, get it to boot off a startup file on the disk. There you go. Um, so yeah, I think that is everything that really there is to know. Um, so yeah, that was not a very long episode and I kind of brushed over all of that stuff because again, if you're going to be moving files around, please just use, uh, use paste bin. Um, it's handy for the like booting up stuff, the disk drives. You can, there is a way you can make kind of like an ID card system where there's information stored on the disk and your computer's running a program and say if someone puts a disk in. I mean, we could uh, edit, listen. I'll just give you an idea of how that might work. Uh, edit, listen. Um, ooh. And we'll just say event is equal to OS dot pull event our old friend pull uh, event print um, event, save, exit, run, listen. So if we take the disk out, I don't know if that, yeah, well, there we go. Disk eject, listen. So you could have it. So whenever someone, um, puts a disk in, if you're listening to the, for the event disk, um, you can also read and write files, um, in a program, which is something for a future episode, because that starts to get a little bit advanced. But um, yeah, so there you go. Discs also trigger events. There's something else. Um, anyway, just use Pastebin for the love of God, um, guys. If there is anything that you would, I see that you know we've got about 30 odd people following along with the series. Tell me what you would like to, you know, you would like to see. Um, yeah, if there's you know anything you've got questions about, please whack it in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe if that is your thing. If not, why you gotta hurt me so, huh? Huh? Nah, you're alright. I'll catch you next episode. See ya!